Yes, yes, people, you read the title, and we're back! Looking at more Let Me Explain Studios. Now, first of all, I want to say thank you so much to Rebecca for checking out the last video. I'm so glad you liked it. You know, I work really, really hard to make sure that my videos feel special, and if I'm gonna watch other YouTubers' content in my videos, I want to honor them as best as I possibly can. So it really means a lot to me when the people I make videos about actually watch them and enjoy them. It really means a lot to me, so thank you. Today, we are checking out some of the most legendary Dairy, let me explain studios videos ever. These are highly requested by you guys. Apparently, these are some of the greatest, and so we gotta do them. My terrible mouth accident. I don't know how I skipped over this one last time. I guess I didn't understand the lore. <laughs> but we literally last time we watched the four most viewed videos, except for the mouth accident. Apparently, it's legendary. And then there are a couple other that you guys recommended. So we are gonna start with this one. I'm very excited. Strap in. Get your popcorn. You know what I'm saying? Or just water if you want to be healthier. That works too. And people, let's hit it. Robert Eddie K. Let me explain studios. Ichi ni sang go. Hello. Hello. This is Pablo. Leave a message. Uh, oh, hey, hey, Pablo. It's Henry. Listen, I'm kind of having one of those existential crises right now, and I could really use a legitimizing second opinion here. Um, how are we still in a job? If no one in this timeline has a mouth, then why exactly is there a need for two fairies? And and more so, doesn't this make this very difficult to tackle any mouth-related topics in this world? I just don't know. It just feels like a big oversight on the part of the creator. Anyways, call me back. Please. True. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what happened to her teeth? That makes sense. Yeah, there's no need for a tooth fairy when you just don't have mouths in this universe. Does anyone have a mouth in this universe? We're gonna find out. Maybe the trauma from this mouth accident is why she doesn't draw mouths. Hello, my geeks and peeps, my explainers and entertainers, That's my me. little oodle allies. That's me. Rebecca Parham here. You've read the title, you know what we're talking about, and I bet you're all saying to yourself, Oh, Becca's got herself in a real pickle now. How's she gonna tell a story about her mouth when she doesn't have one? <laughs> Shush. Chill out, I got this. There you go, problem solved. Whoa. Anytime I gotta show you a mouth, it's post-its to the rescue. Whoa. All right, enough of that. Let's move on. Injuries, accidents, life-altering wounds that scar us physically and emotionally. Yeah, they make great stories, don't they? Yeah. And don't we just love telling them? Dude, you want to see my scar? Got attacked by a mountain lion. Fought it off with my bare hands. That's his appendectomy scar. Oh, <laughs> I was just gonna say, said no one ever. Fighting off a mountain lion. Yeah, guys, just so you know, scars are very cool, but don't ever try to get one. Under any circumstances, don't try to get a scar. To the 0.001% of people watching this who are like, man, you know, it would be cool to go and fight a mountain lion. <laughs> don't, don't. You'll leave with more than a scar. You'll leave without your life, that is. You will leave uh, the plane of consciousness. Honestly, I've been rather fortunate. I haven't injured myself too many times in life. I mean, my dad accidentally pulled my arm out of my socket when I was six. Ow. I got hit in the face with a softball when Ow. I was in middle school and had a shiner for a week. I slipped in water in high school and tore cartilage in my knee. Wow. A girl in theater dropped a heavy set piece on my foot and I had to do the rest of the shows with only one shoe on. I broke my toe, banging it on a platform trying to get off stage. You know, maybe I'm more accident prone than I thought. Yeah, that's a good amount. I wonder how much football helmets cost. But my big injury story that I always tell people happened when I was very young. And it involves... My teeth. No. I personally don't remember it at all, but my sister says she has a traumatizingly clear memory of it. That, and of course, my parents were there for it. Actual content warning here, this story might get just a wee bit graphic. Because, Let's go. you know me, I've never been averse to a little bit of blood. Let's go! Or a gallon or two. For the brave souls still watching, let's get this show on the road. When I was about three years old, Dad wanted to have a play fort built in the backyard for me and my sister. He called over a family friend who happened to be a carpenter. <laughs> okay, so you aren't drawing mouths, but you'll draw full beard? <laughs> this looks like a brown Pac-Man eating this guy's head. Okay, yes, we have learned something about this drawing style. How bizarre. You know, you do you, Rebecca. Ain't nobody else doing this, so it's cool. He called over a family friend who happened to be a carpenter, so they could draw up some plans and discuss how big it should be and where to put it. Mom wasn't home at the time, so to keep an eye on me and my sister, Dad let us run around the backyard while he and the carpenter talked things over. 
So in our backyard, we had a porch, and by the law of the South, if y'all have a porch, you gotta have a porch swing. Which we did, though it wasn't a very good one. Dad was keeping a watchful eye on us, but as any parent will tell you, the worst things always happen when you turn your back for just a moment. <laughs> and when Dad wasn't looking, I managed to climb up on this porch swing. I stood up on okay. it, and I guess in my three-year-old mind, I thought I was on one of those playground spring horses, so I began rocking it back and forth. Nah, that's what a child's gonna do. If you give a, a child access to anything ah! swinging, they gon' swing, okay? And that's the problem when you have a porch swing. Porch swings are meant for people like 50 and up, basically. But a small child does not know this information. They aren't aware of that, nor do they care. Nor would they care if they if they did know the information. All right, so are we gonna lose our teeth on the ground? Are we gonna lose it on the swing? What's it gonna be? And apparently I was not holding back. Your girl was chasing bandits in the Wild West somewhere. Woo! I don't know. Now, remember how I said this wasn't a very good porch swing? Well, good porch swings are designed so they can't flip over. <laughs> but this one... Concrete. Well... <laughs> Concrete. <laughs> Woo! Concrete. No! 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 Dad heard my screams and he ran over in a panic. Oh, no. He lifted me up off the ground. There goes the baby and teeth. There was nothing but blood. I had bitten through my top lip, which left this handsome little scar later, and the force of the fall had pushed my front teeth back and up into oh. my head. Without a moment to lose, Dad grabbed me and Rachel, oh. threw us into the back of the car, and sped off to the hospital. Rachel sat next to me the whole ride, holding my head back so I wouldn't bleed on everything. And being only five years old herself, naturally she was freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm starting to second guess that uh, tree fort, that, that playhouse you were gonna build. Maybe we build this tree fort out of cotton candy. Why don't we just do a pillow fort instead, okay? I think this might be more Rebecca's speed at this point. And dad was even more distraught, feeling like the worst father in the world. Oh, but as no. he quietly panicked to himself, all of a sudden, he heard from the back seat. Oh, no. A McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on this farm, he had a car, E-I-E-I-O. E -I -E well, Very I guess cool. that's what you call more rebound than a kickball. No, I don't think Dad appreciated the musical number. When we got to the hospital, the doctors ended up having to push my teeth back into oh. their original position. Oh. But these teeth were pretty much destroyed. Oh, and when Mom showed up to the their hospital, she teeth. said Dad was covered in blood and looked like that he'd lost a fight with an angry cat. Ah, poor Dad. <laughs> there wasn't anything more that the doctors could do at the hospital, but we still had to wait two weeks for me to heal two before weeks. I could see a dentist. And what the dentist ended up having to do was give my front two teeth a root canal and then fill it with a compound so it would stay in my head until my permanent teeth were ready to come in. True. Yeah, what do you do? I guess if you mess up your teeth when you're a small child, it's like... Because if you're an adult, you have your adult teeth. And so if something happens to your adult teeth, they will fix those teeth or something, whatever they do, I don't know, whatever. But if you're a child, they aren't going to put in new baby teeth for you. Like you're gonna lose them anyways. Unless I'm wrong, unless there's something about child tooth trauma that I don't know, please let me know in the comments if any child tooth trauma experts, please sound off in the comments, I would really like to know. But yes, yeah, like they're falling out anyways. So do you just have to look like a hockey player for like three years until you get the real ones. You know, I'm actually really glad that I don't remember any of this. I'm already insane in the membrane enough as it is. Who knows how bad I'd be today if I had to carry around this childhood trauma with me. Maybe you do and you just don't realize. Maybe that's why you don't remember it. It's called blocking? I don't know. It's called repressed trauma. Could be. It could be. You never know. The whole ordeal had basically killed my front two teeth and they turned yellow. Also, Aww. the next tooth over needed a half metal crown on the back of it, and given that cool. teeth are translucent, that made the tooth look green. So yeah, for the next <laughs> few years of my childhood, I was walking around with yellow and green teeth. Just look at this jacked up mouth Whoa, of mine. Cool. I think I had these teeth until I was about six or seven. And as Whoa. you can imagine, such a blow to the face not only messed up my baby teeth, but my permanent teeth came in wonky as well. In fact, oh. when I went to the orthodontist to get braces in middle school, she discovered I had four permanent teeth that were supposed to come in, but were stuck up in my gums. 
I had to get teeth removed so they could come in. My mouth was a train wreck. Thankfully, I think I've finally got these chompers under control. They ain't perfect, but who could blame them after going through such misery? It's okay, teeth. You're good enough. That's why I never animate you. <laughs> Okay, moral of that story is I'm not getting a porch swing. Not getting a porch <laughs> swing when I'm older. But yeah, I think the teeth turned out okay. And hey, you have a legendary story out of it. As much as I'm sure it wasn't fun growing up with yellow and green teeth, you're still the only homie with yellow and green teeth and nobody can take that from you. It's a special thing that deserves to be celebrated. And for those of you wondering, yes, my dad did eventually get that play fort built. <laughs> I'd have thought he'd think twice about letting his clumsy daughter up in high places, but eh, none of the Param children ever fell out of that fort. I guess I set a pretty good example of what not to do. You hear that, mom? Your daughter's a trailblazer. Yeah, I would abandon the play for it. <laughs> I would be so Thanks, scared. Arthur. Only water-related toys from now on. Low-impact toys from now on. When we're replacing all the grass in our backyard with silly putty. We ain't losing more teeth. We ain't losing more. Truly legendary. That one was a lot of fun. And to be honest, I kind of want to continue the theme of childhood trauma. What, 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 what? And so I will. I got stuck on a roof! I'm just in the mood now, guys. I'm in the mood for repressed trauma. What can I say? And before we get started, real quick, I, I gotta say, hey, Rebecca's channel is gonna be in the description and it's gonna be linked at the end of the video. If you are watching this and you're not subscribed to her, <laughs> silly, silly, silly. Make sure you do that. Also, subscribe to this channel because if you don't, <laughs> Uh, silly, silly, silly. And a uh, boop like on this video, because if, if you don't, I'm not gonna do it again. But yeah, it would be really appreciated if you supported this channel and uh, obviously Rebecca. Okay, are you ready? Cause I am! Oh, he got stuck on a roof! Toi, de un. Go. Hello, my geeks and peeps, my explainers. That's me. That's literally me. Hello, my geeks and peeps, my explainers and entertainers, my little oodalallies. Rebecca Param here. Even when I was young, I never understood the type of kid who did stupid, dangerous things for fun or attention. My grandfather, who was a rocket scientist for the Air Force, used to say that a mark of intelligence- Yo, air, real quick, real quick, if we're talking Air Force, I gotta I, real quick. My great uncle was a lieutenant colonel, I believe, in the US Air Force as well, and I'm currently wearing one of his old ties, of an official US Air Force tie. So I just wanted to say shout out to my uncle Ron. Sorry, I, I was very much not expecting that to happen. <laughs> I was not expecting that to happen. Okay, here we go. My grandfather, who was a rocket scientist for the Air Force, used to say that a mark of intelligence was understanding cause and effect. If I jump off of this very high rock into very shallow water, there is a high probability that I will break something important and possibly do permanent damage to my frail human body. Hmm. Yay! Maybe the admiration of my peers isn't worth risking my entire future as a just kidding yay! Oh, gosh. I wasn't one of those kids, not even close. I was the terrified one in the corner who had to muster up courage just to ask for the hall pass. So it's a jolly good wonder how I ended up in this precarious predicament that I'm about to describe to you. Okay. Let's rewind the clock, shall we? Yeah, how'd you get on the Rebecca, roof? You're up. The year was sixth grade. Still doing the preparatory school thing and still very much a loner geek obsessed with Pokemon video games and cartoons. But around this time, Relatable. I did manage to make one friend for a short while. She was in the grade above me, which I thought made me so cool. At this school, you didn't make friends outside your grade. You stuck True. to your own kind. Well, it's hard. It's hard to do that, isn't it? You're literally in classes with the people. Anyone who's in school right now, like elementary school, I don't know how it works for you, but how it worked for me, was yeah, you pretty much see some of the same people every year, but like the classes do get switched and flopped and what whatnot as, as you go on. But typically, yeah, you only know people your age because you have classes with them. You have classes. You're in their class. <laughs> you don't have classes with them. So in elementary school, Having a friend in a different grade, that would be pretty cool and very hard to accomplish. Unless like your mom knows their mom or something, you know what I'm saying. So the fact that an older girl wanted to be friends not only made me feel special, but it made me feel like I was getting away with something. We'll call her Kay. And looking back, it's pretty clear to me why we got along so well. While I personally thought she was one of the cool kids, she was clearly the loner weirdo geek in her own class. Aww. Proof that perspective is everything. Maybe one day I'll be as cool as her. She also liked Pokemon and video games and was really good at Super Smash Brothers, Aww. the original. 
Yes! Yes! Sorry. <laughs> Rebecca's speaking to my soul in this video. First, the Air Force. The original Smash Bros. Let's go. The original Super Smash Bros. is probably my most, most time I've ever spent on any game ever. I've probably spent like over like 8,000 hours of my life playing the original Super Smash Bros. So Rebecca, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if the planets ever align and we are in the same room together, N64 Smash Bros. She's also the one who taught me the infamous item duplication glitch in Pokemon Red and Blue, so yeah. The geek was strong with this one. One day, Kay invited me over to her house for a sleepover. Now you have to remember, at this point in my life, my family lived out in the country, so most of the kids at school did too. And Kay's house was on a very big piece of property many, many acres and far cool. away from any neighbors. Levels of seclusion that made you wonder- Oh, this is to. the roof Anyways, you get stuck she on. and I were having a lovely old sleepover and I wasn't going to be picked up until the afternoon of the next day. So we had lots of time to kill. After a very full night of trading Pokemon and playing all 12 characters in Smash, <laughs> we were enjoying breakfast when her parents came in. They told us they were going to the farthest stretches of their property to work on a new house they were building. Right, new house. Gotcha. I'm ignoring the shovels and suspicious tart. <laughs> one second after Kay's parents closed the door behind them, she turned to me and gave me one of those looks that said, I'm about to drag you into something you're gonna regret. Would you really do that? I mean, I guess farm life just hit different. My family would not like leave. If I was like a child and I had a guest over, my parents would go into like extra, we need to make sure you're okay mode. They wouldn't leave with shovels. Shovel? And a tarp. I guess they're still on the same property, but apparently Rebecca gets stuck on the roof. So obviously you're a little too far, mom and diet. You wanna go out on the roof? Bruh. Go what do where now? Kay's house was two stories, but the second story was a lot smaller than the first, and via a window on the second floor, oh. one could easily slip out and parkour to their little heart's content Yay. all over the first story roof. Kay That's took safe. us up to the second story, opened the window that would lead to the roof, and said, don't worry, I've done this lots of times and nothing bad ever happened. Bruh. Well, she did appear to be alive. So I guess there was a good chance she didn't ever die from going out on the roof. And I was not about Decent to turn yellow-bellied in front of my cool older friend. So I followed her outside onto the roof. And just as we both made it out, she said, <laughs> See, it's all fine. Just as long as Windows we don't close the- No! No! Window. I really hope you went to the bathroom before this. Turns out, the window locked automatically whenever it was Oof. closed, and no amount of us trying oh was gosh. getting it to budge. Now, modern innovation would make this a non-problem, because everybody and their grandmother has cell phones that might as well be implanted into our True. hands. But back then, you didn't get a cell phone until you were, like, a teenager, if you were lucky, and whatever phone you did get was just that. A phone, not a mini computer with access to a literal world of distractions and activities. True. So even if I did have a phone back then, chances are I wouldn't be carrying it on me anyways. So that meant we were stuck on a roof with no one else around. I vote you jump. How big is this property? Like you can't shout? The parents won't hear you if you shout? That's what I call a big property. If it's that big that they can't hear you when you shout, Literally scream from the rooftops, literally. Not a figure of speech. Liter you, you got it? Okay. Then yeah, they shouldn't be that far away. Especially if you have a guest. Duh. I vote you jump. If your legs aren't broken, go back in the house and open the window. Neither of us were going to jump. First off, it would have been <laughs> stupid. Secondly, her house was on a hillside with Whoa. lots of jagged rocks. So if you jumped, you weren't just going to fall 12 feet. You were going to hit and then tumble down a steep rocky hill. So, you know, might get a boo-boo. There were trees around us, but none of them were close enough for us to climb down. And if my childhood bully friend Jocko taught me anything, oh. it's that twigs have a weight-bearing limit. Our next option? Scream! Kay's parents were working on a house over a mile away. So all we two middle school away. girls had to do was create the same level of decibels as a rock concert in <laughs> order to just barely be heard at that distance. Uh, yeah. Surprise, recreate surprise. It. Ten Please minutes recreate of screaming it. didn't do anything. It just made us a little hoarse. Bruh. So we couldn't jump, we couldn't climb, and we couldn't call for help. What is a girl to do? Well, my beautiful mind came up with a real humdinger. 
I started grabbing leaves off the adjacent branches and spelling out SOS <laughs> on the roof. Yes, I really no did that. Way. I don't know who I was trying to flag down. A helicopter? Kite? Oh my a gosh. Buzzard? Hey! Hey! We're about to be dead soon, so you might as well stick around. Ah, oh, come on now. It could totally be worse. Oh no! Nope, nope, no, 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 nope. I will not be resorting to this Hollywood cliche of a joke. Oh, it okay. was actually a nice day, okay. but thank goodness it didn't happen in the middle of Texas summer. We definitely would have looked like SpongeBob Oof. and Patrick in Shell Oof. City by the end of it. Stuck up there for Suppressed sadness. Oh my gosh, don't remind me of SpongeBob and Patrick and Shell City. I was fine with the glass bones and paper skin reference, but the Shell City, you've gone too far. That's just gonna make me sad. We were stuck up there for two hours. But thankfully her parents weren't away that long. Must have been quite a sight to come home to. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. K's parents. I see you've made short work of that suspicious tarp. If you get us down, I promise not to testify against you in court. <laughs> Why does she always bring home the weird ones? <laughs> One ladder later, and Kay and I were safely back on the ground. Why ladder? Why not just open the window? I feel like a ladder, coming down from a ladder is more dangerous than just going inside, opening that window. Okay, whatever. I mean, you, you survived. You survived, I guess. You're good now. You're good now, so I guess it doesn't matter. Okay. Her parents were surprisingly chill about the whole thing. Didn't even threaten to tell my parents. It looked <laughs> like I was gonna get away with my dumb decisions scot-free. Kay's parents didn't even bother to see me off when my dad came to come pick me up. Everything was coming up, Becca. But just as I was walking out to greet my dad... And remember, don't tell him anything! What? What? Don't tell me what, dear what? of mine. <sighs> what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you, woman? Uh, child, you had one job. You had one job, you didn't do it right. Now Robert's gonna roast you tonight. You had one job. You literally just don't say anything and you're good. She would have been good. Now Rebecca has to come up with a lie on the spot. Oh, okay, fine, I'll tell you. I accidentally wore my shirt on backwards. There, there, I confess. I confess. Oh, okay, Rebecca, let's go back home and play Nintendo 64. You just gotta think fast. You gotta think fast. You can still get out of this. The jig was up. I had to tell him. And of course, he was not happy. Got a big old lecture on the way home. Wasn't because, your idea. You know, I guess my parents cared about my safety and stuff. Shortly after Kay switched schools, though I think we all know what that meant. Oh, poor one out the for the poor was, murdered soul of the Kay. Hole was for her. She got to be a ghost story before me. May her roof climbing hijinks live on in infamy. Why did I always make friends with the weird ones? <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap! Oh, snap! Yo, that was a phenomenal ending. I think that was the funniest one. I think that was the funniest one. Yeah, Kay and her parents do seem like odd people, and who knows, if she didn't switch schools and you did remain her friend for the foreseeable future something very bad could have potentially happened so maybe the reason you are alive to tell the story today is because she switched schools anyways i think we have time for one more Big drink oh, another highly requested classic my teacher obliterated someone did they really did they really did they really? Is your teacher's name Mr. or Mrs. K, K's parents? You you sure seem to uh, get involved with a lot of uh, killers. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we'll learn a lesson about who to avoid in life by watching this video. All right, people, are you ready? This time in Espanol. Tres, dos, uno, go. You should expect a certain level of stability in your educators. I think we're all entitled to that. There are bad teachers out there, but there is a huge difference between bad and seriously dangerous. Many of you yes. may remember I mentioned my mentally unstable vindictive theater teacher in a previous video, and I may or may not devote an entire video to her later on. But she was nothing compared to who this video is actually about. So for this story, I think we'll call him E, e. although I guess I could use his real name, considering he's, you know, dead. <laughs> <laughs> He might what? come back to haunt me. We'll what? He e. e was my communications teacher in college. His class was required for my business minor, so there was no getting out of it. So I arrived first day to this class, and 
immediately. Like I set one foot in the door and something about this guy just doesn't sit right with me. Wait, so did the teacher do the or did the teacher get the or both? Did both happen? That would have made an even better title. My teacher obliterated someone and then also got obliterated. That would have been an even crazier title. Also, I mean, yeah, you can use the first name of a person. I mean, if his name is like Ethan or something, you can say Ethan. There's a whole lot of Ethans out there. Just his general demeanor and, and mannerisms and the way he talked, it set off so many red flags. Weird fact about me, for years now, I've had deadly accurate intuition when it comes to bad people. For my entire life, I've never been wrong. <sighs> well then, I am so glad that you said something nice on my previous video. I am so glad that I did not set off the bad person dar. Bad person radar is a short form. If a serial killer in disguise walks into the room, I'm shamelessly baring my teeth and hissing like an irate cat. And E was just setting off all of the alarms in my head. He gave us the syllabus the first day, but I might as well have just torn it up right then and there because he never followed it. And listening to him try to explain an assignment was like listening to Tom Cruise talk about Scientology. <laughs> when everyone showed up to class with their assignment okay. completed, he would be furious that no one did it right, very often contradicting his own previous instructions. The smallest things would upset this guy. I was once handed back a test that had really? a nasty note written really? in the corner because he didn't like the pencil I'd used. And yet half the time he would teach the class dressed as a pauper and drop cuss words and lewd topics into the lecture like it was nothing. Sheesh! I got in trouble for using the wrong writing utensil one time too. It was so annoying. I did an assignment at home, it was an at home assignment. And yeah, we're supposed to use black or blue pen, not red pen, cause red pen is for teachers. We use black or blue pen. I did pencil and I did the whole thing in cursive. This one we had to do everything in cursive. So I did the whole thing in cursive, come back. Robert, you used the wrong- She actually was British. Robert, you used the wrong utensil. You need to go to the office and do the whole thing again in the pen. What? What? Are you kidding me? It's just outdated discipline type stuff. It's like, that's not going to make me a better human being. It's just, I mean, I won't make that mistake again, but it's not going to make me a better human being. Especially because that was a time when the whole class was watching a movie. We were, we were watching a movie that period and I had to sit in the office and I go to the office and they're like, hey, uh, what are you, what are you in for? And I'm like, oh, I did the horrible, heinous act of doing my homework assignment with pencil instead of pen. And of course the office secretary is like, bro, uh, okay, 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 I guess you can sit here. Typically we want real criminals. <laughs> A lot of TMI personal stuff too. Like seriously, dude, keep your love life to yourself. And part of the problem with him being a bad communicator, despite being a communications teacher, <laughs> he refused to stay after class to help anyone or answer any questions or clarify his nonsense, and then later would throw a fit about nobody asking for his help. His Ugh. ego needed to be fed so badly that That's he what would the e fish for, for compliments by constantly asking for feedback. Let me know what I'm doing right or wrong. Special emphasis on what I'm doing right. Because God help the poor soul who offered him polite constructive criticism. I got so sick of this guy that I went to the head of the department and complained. Turns out, so did most of the class. Yeah. And when the head of the department approached him about it, E took it out on us the next class, saying we should have come to him with our grievances. Oh my god. So my big incident with this guy came on the last day of school. One of these policies was if you got a low grade on an assignment, you could correct it and turn it back in for a better grade. Oh, that's on the last great. day, he was handing back some of these assignments. He gave me back a paper I had corrected that was originally a B plus. No. But when he handed no. it to me, no. he said no. the grade had gone down what? to a C. What? what am I in crazy bill? <laughs> Okay, first of all, the ability to redo- That would be so sick! You get an assignment back or a test back. Hey, yeah, you got these multiple choice answers wrong. Here are the right answers. Fill it in with the right answers and we'll pretend nothing- We'll, we'll look past this. Nothing Nothing happened, you're good. That sounds life-changing. I would have gone to Harvard if that was a thing at my school. Your boy would have gone to Harvard. But alas, this is some fairy tale land school stuff. Can't even imagine something like that happening. Happening. Did you get that? The corrected assignment uh, went down. Because you complained. C for complain. Yeah, I was kind of pissed. To the point that I asked this jerkwad to meet me in the hallway so we could discuss it. 
I explained to him what I would think would be basic human logic for any functioning adult. That a paper that was more correct than the previous version should have a higher grade. Yes. Well, E started throwing out every excuse in the book, and I just kept debunking this idiot <laughs> e over and over again with Get the same argument. Get him, Rebecca. Until finally, after like 15 minutes of talking and running around the issue, Get I had him backed into a corner. He started getting physically angry and that's when he pulled out the Draco. gestures at me. I think the only reason he didn't touch me was because my friend Mary was sitting at a table in that hallway watching and listening to everything. Yeah, dude. Yeah, no. You are really backed into a corner, boss. That is how you lose the job forever. Man, I can't imagine the anxiety. I can't imagine the stress. Rebecca doesn't want to be in this position. The teacher doesn't want to be in this position, but it's entirely their fault. But if you get a teacher fired like that, and they're that much of a crazy person, who knows what could happen? This is pretty scary. This is much more scary than getting, uh, being on the roof for a couple hours. And then it all just kind of caved. He said, Rebecca, I think I'm just gonna f quit teaching. He basically had an emotional breakdown in front of me. What? I started crying. It was very strange and embarrassing. <laughs> Several times I told him to calm down and take a breath. Admitting his defeat, he agreed to fix my grade, but then left class early oh right after that, gosh. his tail between his legs. Same day, I went back to the department head and told him what happened. Not like it did anything, because E taught for another two years at that school before leaving. So now, I bet a lot of you are wondering, well, what happened to E? Yeah. And as you might have read by the title of this video, oh, no. something not very nice. Something very unfortunate, actually. About two years after I graduated, someone sent me a link on Facebook to a news article, and... It was pretty shocking what I read. Okay, so you did a content warning for the teeth. You did a content warning for the for the teeth. Hey guys, be careful. If you're scared of teeth things, there's gonna be teeth in this video. This should probably have a content warning. <laughs> now, I know this video is like is like six years old, but yeah, I'll give you the content warning. Content warning, yeah. Very, very, uh, yeah, serious subject. And I'ma do my thing, I'ma do my thing. I'ma try to keep it lighthearted, but yeah, the title makes sense now. Title makes sense. He had been teaching communications at a different university when he met someone in one state, fled to another state, and shot himself during a police standoff. <sighs> kind of hard for me to add anything more to that. I mean, a man that my gut told me was dangerous ended up being dangerous. Though I will say, it is a rather chilling notion that I was standing in a hallway poking a would-be murderer with a stick over a paper. And I do sometimes wonder how differently that situation would have turned out if I didn't have a witness. Oh my gosh. All right, explainers and entertainers, sorry for that downer of an ending, but that is the story of the worst teacher that I've ever had. Share your crazy teacher stories in the comments below. Jeez, is that the most real and serious story out of everything we've looked at in the last month or so of doing this? That just got way more real than everything else we've looked at. Sheesh. Well, Hey, it was a good story at least. It was a good story. That is really rough. Man, poor E, honestly. I mean, well, okay, I guess I can't feel bad for them after they did something to hurt another person. I mean, it's obvious that they had a very horrible, horrible time mentally. And yeah, of course you feel sympathy for that, but then of course they did like the worst thing you can do. Yeah, that's an awful story. And yeah, I guess all you can really learn is just be careful. You never know who you're talking to. I'm glad Rebecca's okay. Goodness gracious. That was crazy. And people, if you want to get a little bit more lighthearted, here's Rebecca's channel. Check out another video. Make sure you subscribe to her. Support her stuff. She works so hard on these videos. I'm just a silly boy saying the silly things. Here is the last time we looked at her channel. Check it out if you haven't seen it. It was so fun. Or here's a video that YouTube thinks you will like. Are they right? You let me know. I love y'all. Thank you for watching my stuff. Bye!